significant new road safety campaign focusing on the distraction that can of course occur through the use of mobile phones and I'm joined by Darren Filkey, Superintendent at South Australia Police. The motive that you will see as part of this campaign is the Grim Reaper and that is the strongest message we can possibly send. If you are using your phone and you're distracted, the risks are as serious of course as your death or the possible death of those in front of you, in the car with you or behind you. You know as well that government messaging has very strongly focused and asked road users to drive as if loved ones were ahead of them on the road or behind them on the road. Darren, do you wish to add a few words? Sure, thanks Minister. Uh, as the Minister said, we're launching a new uh, road safety campaign to discourage people uh, driving while using their mobile phone. As you can see, the, the campaign messaging is you know, don't flirt with death and flirting with death is exactly what you do uh, if you decide to use your phone while driving. Uh, we know that unfortunately uh, the prevalence of people uh, using their mobile phone or wanting to use their mobile phone while driving is, is increasing. We, we know that mobile phones have become part of, of people's everyday lives and unfortunately that's transferring over into, into the cars that they drive, into the vehicles that they, they, they drive in. Uh, we really want to stop people being tempted uh, by using a mobile phone uh, while they're driving. Driving. Uh, some people might not believe it uh, or even know it, but driving is a complex task um, and what we don't want is people to be distracted while they're engaging in, in driving. We know that in the last five years um, almost 200 people have lost their lives and um, over 1,700 people have been seriously injured as a, as a result of distracted, distracted driving. Uh, they're all individuals from communities and families that didn't need to lose their lives or be injured through distraction. The other part is we, we also acknowledge that uh, distraction comes in many forms. It's not all mobile phones, um, but overwhelmingly we, we know that mobile phone is the, is the most uh, contributing factor to, to distraction, hence the media campaign. So really we've got a, a, a pretty simple message and that's don't flirt with death. That's what will happen if you use your mobile phone. Just leave your mobile phone alone while you're in the vehicle. We might have a couple of questions to add to the superintendent's comments and emphasis. We know that up to a third of all deaths on our roads this year are linked to distraction. And we know that over 160 serious injuries this year alone have been linked to distraction. The government is determined to change driver behaviour in relation to distraction and mobile phone use. Are there any questions? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's good you're cracking down on this. Obviously, there is an impact on the community, but at the same time, we're going to be making millions and millions of dollars. It's estimated $300 million from these new cameras are going to be, you know, bought in. What are you going to do with that $300 million? I've been very, very clear that if not a single dollar was raised from cameras that are designed to detect the mobile the use of mobile phones then I would be satisfied but let, let me make this absolutely crystal clear the funding that is raised from the driver distraction cameras goes into the, the community road safety fund and will be spent on road safety measures and and as I say if not a single dollar was raised for general government revenue from these cameras, I, as Road Safety Minister, would be satisfied. The purpose of these cameras is to change behaviour that we know is killing people. That's a lot of money. What sort of road safety measures do you need? Well, as you, as you know, uh, the Road Safety Fund is, uh, funds are directed at a wide range of road safety outcomes. You'll see the benefit of those when you're driving. And if you're heading up through the hills, you'll of course see improvements uh, right throughout the road network. But, but as I say, if not a single dollar from these cameras uh, was, was raised for the, general purpose, for the general purpose revenue fund, I would be satisfied. The government is absolutely determined to change driver behaviour for one reason. We know that using your mobile phone whilst driving can kill you. It became apparent recently there was a glitch in the system where the wrong cars, the wrong people could be uh, fined. Has that glitch been sorted out or what's going to happen with that? Well, I understand that there has been a report that is now 12 months old, which identifies some of the error rates in the testing and commissioning process. As I've indicated on ABC Radio and elsewhere, those error rates are very, very low. 
they're consistent with the use of these types of cameras elsewhere and of course those issues are being examined. We're still in the testing phase. As you're aware, the process is in three steps, testing and commissioning, then a grace period where drivers who are using their mobile phones will be notified and then thereafter from 19 September onwards infringements will be issued. You'll know too that there is a selection process a technological selection process for these images, but there is also human review. So if you receive an infringement notice, you'll know that a human has reviewed that photograph and made that decision. So can, you, can you guarantee by 19th of September that people won't be issued with the wrong time? Well, the testing and commissioning process is for the very purpose of ensuring that we can have confidence in the cameras that are being used. They're Australian-made cameras, but you know, this is technology that has been in place in other jurisdictions in Australia for a very, very long time. A uh, human review element, and maybe it's a question to the Darren. How much um, like resource will that be taking up on top of what police are already doing? Well, I, I think um, I indicated on ABC Radio that the advice we have is that up to six additional positions may be required. But do keep in mind that $15.9 million has been available, made available for this program. And so the resources are available to ensure that there is a sufficient human review process. Superintendent, um, some of these matters are operational and so I thought I'd better, better give yeah, you the opportunity sure. to comment as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been well spoken about in the last week or so at least, uh, uh, talking about the mobile phone detection camera issue. Uh, as the Minister said, SAPOL are going to be well resourced and well funded um, to undertake, let's call it the, the manual review of uh, the the photographs that are taken by the mobile phone detection cameras, um, that was always going to be part of the process. It's also important to note that the, the people who are undertaking those reviews are not sworn police, they're not frontline operational police. They are uh, support staff um, who are, have been trained in that role. So we're not going to see uh, police being taken off the front line or absorbed into administrative tasks. Uh, we, we're, the government have funded us um, to, to employ more people to undertake that particular task. I know it's early days for those cameras, but is there any consideration of potentially having mobile cameras in the future? Um, technology now uh, enables us to do a whole a whole range of uh, things. This is the, clearly it's the first time uh, we've brought mobile phone detection cameras into South Australia. Um, as the Minister pointed out, they are in use across the country and some jurisdictions do use them. Um, in more mobile uh, capability. That is something that we'll look at. Um, anything uh, that we can do uh, to work with government and to work with other people to um, enhance road safety, to stop people losing their lives on the road, to stop uh, serious injuries happening on our roads, we'll have a look at. And, and really, uh, today is about um, a media campaign. Uh, that's part of the education process in, in this as well. It's not. Enforcement is a key piece of the puzzle, but education uh, is a real key piece of the puzzle. And this, this campaign strikes the heart of education. We want people to understand uh, how dangerous distraction can be while they're driving. Um, and as I said, mobile phone uh, is a strong contributing factor to mobile phones. So um, yes, we'll have the phone cameras as enforcement, but this campaign is about education and making people stop and think about what they're doing uh, we need to change their behaviour. Are you, are you trying to scare people with the Grim Reaper? Oh, I think uh, the market research would, would indicate that uh, people want to know what consequences are. Um, and uh, you've seen the ads this morning, there's a, a slightly, I suppose, humorous play on that. So it's, there's an element of, uh, of grim about it. Uh, we've kind of moved away from uh, sort of the blood and guts, I suppose, in, in this particular um, this particular campaign, but uh, no less, it shows what the consequences can be if you're a distracted driver using using your mobile phone. So what's the message? The message is, uh, don't use your phone while you're driving. Uh, don't be tempted to use your phone while driving. Uh, the complex task of driving is just that. You need to concentrate on all of that. Uh, as the Minister said, concentrate on what's ahead of you, concentrate on what's behind you, and just imagine it's your family member that's doing that. Uh, really, just people just have to get away from the temptation of using their phone, put it away, and just drive and get to your destination safely. I know it's very technical, but you can't even touch your phone. Can you? And 
I know that Assistant Commissioner Parrott and the Commissioner have been on radio uh, this week and this has been discussed. If your phone is in a commercially approved cradle in front uh, in your vehicle, you can answer and disconnect from a call by touching your phone. But you cannot do that if it is not in a commercially approved cradle. You can't send a text message. You can't use the GPS functionality. You can't surf social media. You can't use Spotify or whatever those other functionalities are on the phone. You can touch your phone to receive and hang up a call if it's in the cradle. How much does a campaign like this cost and, and does it pay off? Uh, yeah, well, it's, we're funded. It's part of a safe pulse, kind of an $11 million funding uh, for road safety campaigns throughout the year. Um, this campaign uh, is uh, within that, 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 that in, within that funding. So, uh, if we can save one life, if we can save a serious injury, um, it's worth the money to spend, no matter how much it costs. Just, uh, Sorry. Yeah, can I ask you on another topic? Uh, there was a protest in the city last night. Yeah. Now this was really the first test of the government's new obstruction laws, where hefty fines up to fifty thousand dollars could have been applied but weren't. Why weren't they applied? Why did they? Why did police rely on the old road traffic act, where it was a hundred fifty dollar fine per person? Why not? You know, make use the new laws to their full full force. Yeah, and, and I'll just preface this by saying, um, although I'm aware of the incident, I, I wasn't at the incident. What I do know is that um, last night, since it was confined to the roadway, uh, there was obstruction of traffic and, and movement of traffic on the roadway. Um, the assessment was made at the particular time, given the circumstances of that particular incident, that the application of the Australian road rules and the provisions under there was the most appropriate way to deal with that particular incident. Um, there was no criminal offending per se going on. There wasn't um, any public disorder necessarily, as you might imagine public disorder to be going on. So again, an assessment was made. The Australian road rules were applied in that circumstance. Um, that's not to say that the new laws are not applicable in a different type of circumstance. So you will use some MPD the, the power the government have given us, uh, the power to do that. If the circumstances are such that that is the most applicable uh, legislation to use and power to use, the police will definitely use that. Any more questions about the campaign? Thank you. Minister Mark Hayden has been releasing the community as a secretary. What do you know about this? This is a matter for the Independent Parole Board. As you're aware, the Independent Parole Board forms uh, makes decisions in relation to prisoners' parole conditions. You'll also be aware that Mr Hayden 